Okay, I would like to first of all thank you, the organizer, for giving this opportunity here. Um, my talk is a little bit far from the main lectures, but I hope you'll enjoy it. So I'm going to talk about Hausdorff dimension of a certain measure which um, arises from a certain PDE in the plane. And this is a joint work with John Lewis. Okay. Um, this is an uh, outline of my talk, and let me quickly give the uh, definitions and some setup for the problem. The P, we fix it between 1 and infinity, and the function f, it is um, homogeneous of degree p, and it is from complex plane minus origin to the interval 0 infinity, and homogeneity of f simply means that um, f is in this form, basically. We also assume that this function, gradient of this function f, is delta monotone uh, on the complex plane for some delta between 0 and 1. Later I will tell that it, this is for some reason I'm giving this uh, definition here, but you can simply think that the, the matrices with uh, entries f, eta i, eta j has bounded eigenvalues. Uh, let's say lambda 1 and lambda 2, they are positive and bounded below and above for some, by some constant c. Okay. And the region omega we study is a bounded region in the complex plane. And for a given function h from this Sobolev of space, if we set the admissible set um, right here with, with this way, then we know that there is a function u which satisfies this line here, that the infimum of this integral is some integral of f gradient u, for some u in this, uh, from this admissible set. And from this we also know that this function u is a weak solution to this PD lies here. Um, the case when this function f is mod eta to the power 2, then this PD is the usual Laplace equation. And then the function u is harmonic, fun, um, harmonic function. And the function, when the function f is mod eta to the power p, then the pd becomes so-called the p-laplace equation. And the function, the solution, weak solution called uh, p-harmonic functions. And by weak solution, we mean that u satisfies this line with 2. Okay. And if we also suppose that uh, the domain omega is bounded and simply connected domain in the plane, and we consider a neighborhood of boundary omega with the function, our function u is positive weak solution in the intersection of um, omega and n, and we also assume that u has zero boundary values on the boundary omega, you can simply think that uh, it's a simple example Simple example that when omega is the disk, n is the annulus region with radius 1 half and 2, and the boundary of omega is simply the circle, and u is 0 in the Sobolev says on that uh, boundary. That's a simple, I mean, we can understand this way, basically, the neighborhood of a boundary. And from this, uh, we know that <coughs> there is a unique finite positive Borel measure mu with the support on the boundary omega satisfying this line. And as I told you, when the function f is mod eta squared, then the corresponding PD is Laplace equation, and the corresponding measure is so-called harmonic measure. We know this. And when the function f is mod eta to the power p, this case, the measure is so-called p-harmonic measure. And in the case boundary omega and f smooth enough, we can see the measure like this. Okay. Um, in this slide, I'm going to explain the Hausdorff measure and Hausdorff dimension of our measure we obtained in the previous slide. To do this, we first need a measure function, and we call it lambda here. This is a measure function, and it is defined on certain interval with zero limit at zero. And then we define Hausdorff measure of a set E as the following way. We first fix an epsilon in that interval, and then look at covers of E with both centered zi and with radius ri. Ri is no more than epsilon here. And we set 
uh, this function, which is so-called Hausdorff content of the set E, as the infimum of sum of lambda ri's, this infimum here is taken over all possible covers of the set E. And this is not yet a measure. And if it, the Hausdorff lambda measure is the limit of this function as epsilon goes to zero. So we have the measure, Hausdorff lambda measure, and we will define Hausdorff dimension of the measure mu we obtained in the previous slide in the following way. First of all, we look at Borel sets on the boundary omega, and then these sets should satisfy that a measure of this set is equal to a measure of the boundary omega, and then we look at alphas for which uh, H alpha measure of the, this, this set is zero, and then Hausdorff dimension of this measure mu is the infimum of these alphas. Okay. We have measure, we have definition of Hausdorff dimension, and now we can a little bit talk about some re results. Um, there are a lot of results on Hausdorff dimension of a harmonic measure, and I'm going to give just one of them here, the Makarov result, and as I told you, the re when the function f is mod eta squared, then the measure, corresponding measure, is harmonic measure. And when we define the measure function lambda tilde as this way, just be careful here, we have triple log in some, in next slides, in a couple next slides, we will have some two log for some reason. And then Makarov proved that this measure, harmonic measure, is absolutely continuous with respect to H lambda measure. And I should say that the omega is a simply connected domain in the plane. And he also proved that there is a simply connected domain omega such that the corresponding harmonic measure is um, singular with respect to H lambda measure. And a simple corollary of this theorem tells us, maybe not simple, a corollary of this theorem says that if omega is simply connected domain in the plane, then Hausdorff dimension is one. Okay. One can study Hausdorff dimension of p-harmonic measure in the plane too, and the setup is a little bit different, but w again, if the function f is mod eta to the power p, this time we have the p Laplace equation, which is written here, and the f measure is called p-harmonic measure in this case, and when it's analyst obtained that, when this omega is bounded by a quasi-circle, and then this harmonic measure has Hausdorff dimension less, or, less than or equal to 1 for p's between 2 and infinity, and it is greater than or equal to 1 for p's between 1 and 2. And they also realize that when the boundary is one cosine of lake, then the strict inequality holds here, so it is not, the dimension is not 1. They're sure about that for p between 2 and infinity or 1 and 2. And then Lewis Neustrom and Pietro Poggi Corradini obtained that when this bound, uh, omega is simply connected domain and the major function this time has two logs here, and Makarov has triple log here, three logs here, and they obtained that for p larger than two, this measure, p harmonic measure, is concentrated on a set of sigma finite h lambda measure. And when p is between 1 and 2, this measure is absolutely continuous with respect to H lambda measure. This is not yet um, extension of Makarov's theorem, but recently it was proved that when omega is simply connected and bounded in the plane, and this measure function lambda is the one Makarov's consider. He proved that this measure is concentrated on a set of sigma finite H1 measure for P larger than 2, and it is absolutely continuous with respect to H lambda tilde measure for P's between 1 and 2. Okay, this is complete extension of the Makarov's theorem to a P harmonic setting. And so far I gave you results on harmonic measure and p-harmonic measure, and we study more general uh, measures. Our contribution is, uh, before giving our contribution, I should remember that the PD we are considering is right here, our function use weak solution to this PD in this intersection, and the relation between U and the measure mu is given the line here. Okay. And if we 
define the major function lambda again. This has two log, and we obtain that this measure mu is concentrated on a set of sigma finite h lambda measure when p is greater than or equal to 2, and it is absolutely continuous with respect to h lambda measure for p's between 1 and 2. And a corollary of this theorem tells us Hausdorff dimension of the measure mu is less than or equal to 1 when p is between uh, 2 and infinity. It is 1 when p is equal to 2, and it is greater than or equal to 1 p is between 1 and 2. And maybe I should say that there is certain f and certain uh, omega for which strict inequality holds here. So, okay. Um, I think I have four more minutes. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna skip the proof here, but just the main obstacle here is finding a PDE for which the function u and its, say, xi derivative, both are solution. And log f gradient u is subsolution, solution, or super solution, depending on p. So that's the main thing, the main obstacle to prove this theorem here. And I'm gonna skip the this part quickly, and I want to talk a little bit about future work. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, as I told you, the major function in my case has two log and it's reasonable to work the same problem for this major function that is the one Makarov's consider. We have some ideas, but we still have some obstacles, like RPD is not rotationally invariant, P Laplace equation is rotationally invariant, we cannot apply the same methods there, and we have to find something else here. The second question is relatively uh, hard problem, I believe. Um, as I told you, the Hausdorff dimension of the measure mu is 1 when f is homogeneous of degree 2 and the gradient of f is delta monotone. And what is exact number for Hausdorff dimension of the measure mu when p is not equal to 2? Can we give something as p goes to 2 from above and below or anything like that? There are some results for the case when the measure is a p harmonic measure, but we can still work on this problem, I guess it's a reasonable one. Even again, the boundary omega is certain snowflake domain. We can we don't know still exact number for hazard dimension of the measure mu. Not even in the case of p harmonic measure. Okay, so far everything was in the plane, and we can study this problem in the space too. And the first result I want to give is Bergen's result, which tells us that Hausdorff dimension of the harmonic measure is bounded by n for n is greater than or equal to 3. And one can study the same problem for p harmonic measure 2, and Lewis, Neustrom, and Vogel obtain that when boundary omega has certain properties, they realize that this measure mu is um, concentrated on a set of sigma finite h n minus 1 measure. And they also conjecture that, oh, I should say that the p here uh, should be greater than or equal to n for some reason. And they conjecture, they also conjectured, conjectured that for this measure, Hausdorff dimension of the, this measure is less than or equal to n minus 1 for p greater than or equal to n. Again, this is for p harmonic measure here. And we can ask the same question for general measure that arises in the PD we have. And the, the thing, the problem again, same in the space too. And finding a PD for which the function and its derivative are solution and log f gradient you are sub-solution, solution or super solution to the same PD. And there are some reason we, we could not obtain that yet, but we are working on it. And the second question is totally just a question because uh, as you see here, p is greater than or equal to n and they have some work on this direction. For p is between 1 and n, there are some strange results. 
the first of all, Wolf construct two, uh, uh, constructed two snowflake domain in R3 for which harmonic measure has Hausdorff dimension strictly less than two on one of them and on the other snowflake Hausdorff dimension of this harmonic measure strictly larger than two. So something strange happens when P is near two and is equal to two. So we just say, okay, what can we say about this Hausdorff dimension of this measure mu when P is between one and N? And I think I don't have anything to say right now for this one. And I guess that's all. Thank you.